I'm only in control of how I create and how I express myself. And this is wisdom. That's, I mean, that's the wisdom of then me being able to consciously do that and come to you and not be a reflection. I really hate that word. I'm a sign. I'm a symbol. I'm a symmetry sign and symbol. All right, these C words, sign with a C-Y, symbol with a C-Y, symmetry with a C-Y. Do you see why I'm here? <laughs> That's the point of the C-Y, the symmetry, so you can see why. See why my tree. See why my tree is planted for you. The symmetry, see why my tree is planted is for you. It's so you can breathe in these leaves, so you can get high, so you can elevate, so we can all connect and have fun. Because consent is everything. To see another spirit broaching other, like just other people's consent, to see consent broached in any way makes me more angry than anything I can imagine. Like the things, yeah, no, yeah, there's, there's nothing else. I, I, the angriest I can possibly be is when I see someone's consent getting taken away. And I mean, that's what all this slavery stuff has been. And it's just, we're at this point now that people's minds, they're so mentally manipulated into thinking that they're not having their consent taken away, that they let their consent be taken away. I definitely had no option growing up. Like from being born out the womb, I had no option whether I was allowed to go to school. I was not allowed to choose whether I went to grade school or high school or to hospitals or through the system or really to college. Like the whole point in, was that I was forced to go to grade school and high school and I was forced to go into debt in college so that I could then get into the system because this is the new wave of white supremacy, what it has been. It's using a number to colonize land that the people who made up this number don't own. <laughs> but they made up an idea that allows them to take other people's ideas that were actually created. And that's the extent of white supremacy. Or they'll just, they'll use ideas to take other people's ideas and then they're gonna say that that makes them creative. All while saying that they're not actually creative because everything is one God anyway. Oh my gosh, bro. So, it's important that you know that you're dying right now. And that uh, when you die, you're not going to go anywhere. And I mean, okay. <laughs> when you die, you're just going to be born into another space. As in, you're just going to make another body and take your mind into that awareness. But then also, since it's a new body of water, basically, like since it's new memories, uh, you'll very well forget a lot of this life. I mean, that's the point of like forgetting things in each lifetime <clears throat> is that these are all lots of memories that would get in the way of the next memory. If you remember all these things that happen in one body of water, then you're going to block the way that you flow in this next body of water. So it is this balance of how spirits um, create a relationship inside of themselves. So this is why everything's communication. You are communicating with yourself to constantly wake yourself up every day. Notice, I mean, literally, right? You go to sleep and you wake up every day as a spirit in a body. You dream when you go to sleep and you wake up and you stop dreaming and then you bring your dreams to reality. And now you live out your life after you dreamed all that stuff. And it's just the representation of how you as a spirit, when you are creating a body to connect with other spirits, that body still has to connect with itself. So when you go to sleep, that's your time to connect with yourself versus connecting with the universe. When you're awake, you're connecting with the universe, right? That's everything outside of you. Every, like everything outside of you. That's here we are, right? Like you're hearing me because you're connecting with the universe. When you go to sleep, you can't hear anyone but who? You, right? You're God. Mm-hmm. You're an individual, you're God alone in your own imagination. And as God alone in your imagination, you're infinitely creative and 
that's infinitely hermetic, but now you have to get somatic because it takes creating a circumstance where you can connect your imagination with others, which is always going to be limiting. Or else it's just not relatable, right? We can't, it's not, there's no structure there. So the caduceus has wings at the top and the snake's going up because when you have sex with yourself and you connect with yourself and you do that deeply and like long and hard enough, <laughs> um, and you just really focus on raising your kundalini energy type deal, then you're able to take your mind from your body and realize that by splitting your mind from your earth body, you're able to navigate totally different spaces, totally different simulations in the universe, and thus be aware of entirely different realms, realities, and existences. And then from there, you're able to communicate with way more spirits on a way more conscious and awesome level than how you are communicating in the physical body that you're in. So if you believe that you are just the body, like if I really bring my awareness like down to like, okay, back in like who I was in high school or grade school, right? Where I'm not communicating with my spirit family uh, every day and on like all this interdimensional stuff that I'm on every day. That was, I can remember that. Like I remember how being limited to the body just meant that I was forced to only be able to communicate with the people around me. And then you're, it's a completely like, it's very limiting. It's a very limiting human experience, not being able to communicate with whatever spirits that you want at any time. Um, and that's the point then of the universe versus a simulation, water versus earth. So you as a spirit, you have your own soul and your soul is what is powering and what makes all of your bodies possible. So one could say that the past and the future are happening at once. To me, that's not practical. Um, it doesn't make sense to think of life like that. But I mean, it, it's still true. You know, it just doesn't make sense in terms of a, if the future is happening now, then where is it? You know, because the future is like, literally, where is it? Like, cause the past, we can look at the past. I'm looking at the past right now. Everything that I'm looking at is literally light that took time to travel to my eyes. Thus it's in the past. When I look at stars in the night sky, right? That's the past. So everything that we're building upon right now is only coming from the past. We're clearly going into the future, but the future is like the ultimate God. Like that's literally the future is all of our imaginations together, <laughs> you know? So like the future is just your imagination, but you're not gonna be able to bring that future into the realm that you're in if you're not bringing your imagination with other spirits' imaginations. And then this is why white supremacists are so focused on using movies and uh, all this screen magic witchcraft to project stories into our spaces that make us believe their narratives because they need uh, our imaginations, they need our creativity to create their ugly ass future. And they definitely, the medical industry certainly does not want you to know that you can take your mind from your body and that the caduceus, the symbol that they love to use to peddle all their oil and chemicals represents that fact. The caduceus represents how you are actually using your body to ground how you die. So this is why like, you shouldn't ever be scared of death. Like death is you becoming more free. The point is that the body is you grounding your freedom into something more structured because freedom is chaos. So if I had to give it uh, words, I would correlate then the spirit to freedom and the soul to chaos. The spirit is infinitely free. The moment a spirit connects with itself, 
it is infinitely chaotic. <laughs> That's what water is, right? So nothingness is freedom. When you're detached, you're actually free. True, just clarity. When you are connected, you're chaotic. You're in water. You're underwater. You're now drowning. So when a spirit is free to connect, they get chaotic. And that's what the universe is. <laughs> that's where these sirens are and everything, just coming in right now on a hilarious note. To just uh, let us know that chaos, cacophony, sounds, the moment we want to vibe with something outside of ourselves, we get noises like this. We're not in control of spirits outside of ourselves. So when we connect with ourselves, right, that's freedom still. But, I mean, we're not in control of our emotions. We're in control of how we feel about our emotions. But we're not in control of our emotions. You're not in control of how you feel. You are in control of how you feel about how you feel. That's the power of knowing that you're a spirit. This is a hermetic essentials right here. Knowing that as a spirit, you are the observer. So the moment you feel a kind of way, you can know that you can feel a different type of feeling about that feeling. And this is what real life elemental alchemy is. When you can alchemize whatever feelings that you have going on into something that works for you. And that's literally what art is. And that's what I'm doing right now. All right, lots of feelings and stuff coming up inside of me and all these ideas. And then I feel like connecting with them and I feel all these different kinds of ways about all these different kinds of ideas. And then it comes out in all these different kinds of words. And here I am just communicating and flowing. And this air, this mercury is then carrying myrrh. This idea is carrying water. So now each word is an idea that's carrying the vibration of my voice and it combines into energy so that it can impact your atmosphere and you comprehend what I'm communicating. I hope. <laughs> yeah, how'd I get here? Just talking about the caduceus and you knowing that you're dying and that your soul is your water. So you always exist inside of yourself. It's just that your body is your ability to exist outside of yourself. And when you want to connect with other spirits, then this is why it's really important to love your body because your body is literally other spirits connecting with each other on supporting your ability to connect with other spirits. I'm about to say that again. Your body is literally other spirits connecting with each other to support your ability to connect with other spirits. So this is why I then kind of really feel like your body loves you more than you love yourself. Because literally your body needs you more than you need you, right? Like, and that's like the fact then, like the, this body, all the spirits inside of your body need you. They need you to keep uh, doing their thing. So they love you more than you very well love yourself because you don't feel like you need yourself. You don't. As a spirit, you don't need anything. You're the spirit. But if you're a spirit operating a body, then clearly that body needs you more than you need it. And it's the same exact thing with the medical industry, where they're using my caduceus, they're using my body, they're using my creation, my creative property, because they need you to be the spine of their industry. And that's what the caduceus really represents. This is really why the medical industry is using my caduceus. Because it represents how they are building their spine by capitalizing on your chi. By limiting the way you communicate. Because the more that they can limit the way you communicate, the more they limit the way we communicate, forcing us to sit all day every day, the more they can create problems that allow us to connect with them that allow them to connect with us in ways that make them money. So when they force us to sit all day and then our spines become crooked and our teeth become crooked and then we get all these extra issues that we can solve by decolonizing our faces. Then 
we get opened up to way more health problems that the people who made us create these health problems inside of us can come in claiming to solve with all this metal, right? And then that's like all this surgery and all these invasive, expensive procedures that they're doing on people just based in them making money off of expounding upon a problem that they created. Because the main problem in most of these people's bodies and basically all of our bodies is that we were not using them properly up to this point. The body is a product of how the mind has been using it to communicate. So if the structure that we live in is forcing our minds to communicate with our bodies in ways that's not healthy, eating sugar every day, sitting all day every day, taking medication, watching TV, breathing in all these toxins and fumes and garbage, then yeah, our body is going to create problems. Our body is going to have issues. It's inevitable. Like that's the that's what has to happen because we weren't communicating and using it properly. And then this is then where we have to learn about intelligence and know that, okay, life is complex. <laughs> you know, like simulations are complex, like spirits actively build worlds. I'm in a world with rules like this human body has rules right your body has a specific way that it likes to function in order you know you're not going to walk on your head no matter how much you want to you're not going to walk on your head like your feet are meant for walking so that's just what they'll do your head is meant for being aware and thinking and breathing So the whole point of finding yourself in life is to learn about how spirits are already building the structures that work around you, which is why the medical industry has colonized my creation and is obsessed with using it because they love me. They ride Hermes dick so hard. These colonizers are on Mr. Trismegistus's nuts like no other system in existence colonizers call call away away so much because all they can do is eat the creations of others and then say that the person they just ate was not creative <laughs> so this industry is wild this is why the medical industry uses the caduceus in a nutshell right uh, <laughs> it's um, it's truly all about limiting the way that we communicate so that they can make money off of it and then the wisdom here is knowing that you as a spirit are using your own body to limit the way that you communicate so you can make it make sense so then this industry is obsessed with using my caduceus to make how they communicate make sense and how they communicate is poisoning the environment, forcing us to sit, forcing us to live unhealthy lives so that we create health problems that they can come in and solve. And now they can be like the boys. They can be the superheroes that are saving us from the issues that they created. And when they save us, of course, then they actually make it worse. And they're not actually saving us. They're coming in to create more problems because that's how they're going to make money. Right, that's how they built the system. That's how they're like, oh, okay, we can make spirits need us by limiting their awareness and actively creating problems inside of their bodies and inside of their environments. And then when they react to these problems, we will be there like we did not create them and instead give them a solution that really just creates more problems. But as long as we keep them unaware, they will be in a constant state of reactivity and forever in hell and we shall capitalize on the chi of all these sheep. That's how the people who stole my creation uh, view everybody. So, very important that you start fasting if you're not already. Very important that you are aware of this in general, uh, aware of how the medical industry operates, aware of the pharmaceutical industry, aware of why 
they are so obsessed with riding Callaway's Caduceus. They get so much pleasure off of riding Callaway's Caduceus. And we just covered all the reasons why here. Honestly, there's even more, but I am going to cut this for now. I will see you next time. Stay breezy. Much love. You are an infinite and awesome spirit. I'm sure your nothingness is so beautiful and unique. I can't even imagine. <laughs> Talk to you later. Yeah, yeah.